well, anytime there's a superlative, like you know, the most important thing, uh, it makes me pause because I'm sure I'll have a different answer in a couple hours than I have now. But some, at least something that comes to mind is that uh, first thing is this has to be open, the metaverse. I, uh, in general has to be open in the way that we have successfully been very open about a lot of the internet technologies so that we haven't taxed them in certain ways or haven't uh, we've discouraged a pay per use model in certain ways that, that you know, governments set and very open in national boundaries uh, as data goes back and forth across the internet um, but it's almost that's not almost the most important thing to say to poly, policymakers because I think it's almost going to be possible to avoid. Uh, I can't imagine policies that would prevent that almost in this metaverse. Because, uh, but here's what I would say. Obviously, our our institutions uh, tracking ownership, for example, in uh, the Western world, is very important for our economies and why one of the reasons it's hard to s start free market economies successfully very quickly in other parts of the world uh, that don't have them. And so somehow when individual em people are working for employers who are in another nation state uh, that have employees all around the world and their income is coming to them in a virtual currency that is not tied to a particular government or nation state. Um, and they're creating intellectual property that exists within a virtual world, again, not uniquely hosted in a given uh, country. We're, because of this loss of all geographic boundary and to some degree geopolitical control, it's going to be very important that uh, we do establish um, ownership as, uh, of IP rights and uh, of anything, uh, but also ways to have taxation and participation in um, the other structures of our economy that in a way that is very cross-national. And that seems extraordinarily difficult, but it's going to have to happen. Uh, the only alternative is because all of this cross-national um, dynamics are going to happen uh, is that everything sinks to the lowest common denominator, right? And you're not able to track much or tax much or anything like that. So that's, that's the quandary. I don't have a good answer. that everyone in the world truly has access to it. I think the great opportunity is that this technology really makes globalization small business friendly. In that, as I was mentioning earlier, it, the, the world of Thomas Friedman looks like the Himalayas compared to the metaverse. You know, this is, that's when the world really gets flat when you are an individual who can provide a service or a creative good instantly for anyone else in the rest of the world with the income or the need or the disposable income to pay for it. And you don't have to go through large corporations to participate in the global, globally interdependent economy. So this is going to be the first digital divide that I think really matters, where people who are n do not have access are really almost going to be on a separate planet. From those who do, and that's a that's a scary thought and incredibly important. That's right. I think this technology has the ability to, within the motivational structure of the market economy uh, and other forces, to be a, a level playing field that produces a uh, you know an acceptable and even desirable distribution of wealth. It also has the ability to uh, greatly uh, make more disparate uh, distribution of wealth with great digital divides. Well, it's very easy to point to human-like AI, right? And, and obviously science fiction writers have been writing about it for decades, if not far longer. So it's almost cheesy to say that, but, but we are at least getting to the point where we can see the path for computing technology to um, may not act like humans per se, but to have many, many of the hard and soft skills that humans have. Uh, and it's, you know, the, 
if you had to pick one technology that represents the singularity, you know, the boundary after which we can't really see what human civilization is going to be like, uh, you'd, you'd almost surely pick that one uh, over over others. And like I said, it's a, it's a cloud. It's it's opaque. It's hard to see how that's going to transform us. And the reality is, it's only two or, two or three at most decades off. It's not seventy years off. Well, it's hard to pick out individual technologies, and now the metaverse-type technologies are, are one where, of course, because I'm working in it, I'm steeped in this, and I've thought about all these analogies. Well, here you, you really may work for some companies around the globe, but you feel like you're in the same office uh, every day because you're using this metaverse. But the reality is, as I say, those kinds of accelerating rate of technological change answers that, you know, according to the that rate of change, a more, uh, you know, if you take the, the rate of technological growth in the year 2000, uh, then this century will see 20,000 years worth of progress at that rate will be packed into these 100 years. So you, you first have to blow someone's mind with the degree of change before then you can come back and say, here are some of the changes coming. Or else you, you immediately get the flying car argument. Which is true, right? We thought 50 years ago we'd have flying cars. Now we're not that close to it. So individual predictions can be wildly wrong, but we really understand the pace of change and that it. it you just, we think a lot of things have changed in the last 20 years, but that's nothing compared to what's going to happen. Transcending the physical nature of our lives and that it doesn't mean we're all going to upload into a computer or do something you know crazy like that maybe it'll happen 50 years or whatever but but it's that more and more of our lives are becoming abstract are becoming at a geographic distance and yet feeling closer and more and more of what we do will operate independently of the physical space in which we're in okay.